Okay, family, I've been on the go all morning. Dinner, 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 Batman. And I have wine. Ah. Anyhow, <laughs> that was so silly. All right, so we've got some stuff to talk about, ain't we? A lot. We have, don't we have a lot of stuff to talk about? Man, what we got to talk about? Hold on, wait. Oh yeah, okay. So, there's some fish, fishy stuff been going on, okay? That there are some people who are saying this whole thing with President Trump and the assassination attempt and attack is a distraction, okay? Now, You'll have to bear with me because you probably reached that conclusion already, okay? But what is the dist what is it that we're being distracted from? Well, apparently there has been warships floated, thank you, floated near the coast. No, hold on. I get this right. There has been Chinese warships floating nearby US warships now you might say oh well what the hell are they you know what the hell are the Chinese doing what it is is that US warships and surveillance uh, marine vehicles have been near have been in Asia here near the coast of China and they're actually the US ships uh, were on the perimeter of or very near Chinese territory, okay? And that when those, if you can imagine it, let's do it with the salt and pepper, okay? Let's use the salt and pepper example. <laughs> US warships, Chinese warships. The Chinese warships was in Chinese territory, and this is what US warships did, okay? Now, when the US warships did this, the Chinese warships did this. <laughs> so this created some temporary hostility between these two ships. Now, what they were doing was basically surveillance, okay? Now, some people, especially on TikTok, were saying, well, what the hell are the US warships doing over there in Chinese territory? They should get out. But I think it is typical of Western warships and surveillance marine vehicles to monitor even their allies, even their allies, okay? So it's not quite as strange as we might think. But what, what happened was there was this kind of semi-standoff, tense situation between the USA and China a few days ago. And apparently that happened around the same time that there was the assassination attempt. Okay? So in terms of distractions, that is what we were being distracted from. Because there was a real serious situation that could have popped off, could have, and could have definitely been an international um, situation but we didn't look over there because we were too busy looking about looking at what happened and popped off in Pennsylvania okay so there was a real situation now because of that there has been other talk about Russia and the Ukraine um, and US expenditure on the Ukraine and the US purse strings being quite liberal and open when it comes to Israel and stuff like that. And apparently, you know, we're not being told the truth by all of our governments. Our governments are kind of sending us up the garden path and we're like, you know, we're, we're blindly walking up the path. We can't, you know, we're, we're blind to all of this. Right? Like we literally are. So I found some comments and stuff like that that I thought that 
I'll go through it quickly with you if you don't mind. All right. So. So a few things, and we're going to talk about this lady called Nikki Nikki Healy Nikki Haley um, from South Carolina. We're going to talk about her in a second, but before we talk about her, we just want to have a look at a situation. Okay, so. Uh, Chinese I'll show you the screenshots and then we'll talk okay so here is a screenshot from TikTok and it says Chinese fighter Chinese fighter jet flies in front of US military plane so this is another this is another so we talked about sea now this is air okay so surveillance on land sea and air <laughs> okay under the sea on land and via air all bases are covered when it comes to these peoples and the government okay so a Chinese fighter jet flew in front of the US military plane okay flew, flew in front of it and then somebody said, who are we surveilling? And then somebody else said, everyone. Okay, so the USA is really looking at everyone. So it's kind of like there's this paranoia or this need to know what everybody is doing, even the allies, okay? And then somebody said here that every country has a right to gather intelligence on each other. China does it to us and we do it to them and uh, I, I think you're right yeah <laughs> you, you sure damn skippy are right and I know this because I go to China often so you damn right oh you're damn right if you move one centimeter in China they know where you're at where you are biometric information, footsteps, every last thing. They know every damn thing, okay? So the Chinese fighter jet wanted to see what was up, what you're doing here, you know, you know to the US fighter jet. So the milit military plane, US military plane. Okay, and other people are saying, what is the American plane doing there? And who are we surveilling? Okay. Um, and then someone else said, I don't believe whatever US media says. So there's this growing distrust in our governments. I mean, we Brits stopped believing the UK government years ago. After Thatcher, Thatcher, Bota, and Gorbachev and Reagan, that's it basically. Everything went to seed after that <laughs> in the UK. We stopped believing them. And we certainly stopped believing them before the UK joined the European Union for the lies that they told us and the benefits that it would give us. Oh, let's be part of Europe and it's going to give us this, this and this. <laughs> yeah, right. Less jobs, less housing, higher costs, food and utilities, energy bills up the watts at Majig, homelessness expanded, terrible education system, teachers pissed off, having to ship them in from South, Af South Africa and uh, Australia and New Zealand and them not even wanting to bloody well teach our badass UK kids. Anywho, everything went, everything went to shit. So anyway, we don't believe what the government says in general, okay? what uh, okay so there's that okay now it does say that the Pentagon reacted to this Chinese threat okay which in fact can you call it a Chinese threat if you're near their territory and you're in their territory can you really legit call it a Chinese threat well you can if you usually do that and then all of a sudden you, they, they take umbrage with it. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like if you go to your friend's house and you go every Friday 
at 6.30, okay? And then one Friday you go there and your friends all hostile open the door. What do you want? What are you doing here? Then you'd be like, whoa, excuse me? I usually come here. Aren't I always here? But then your friend is being hostile towards you. So has something changed in this kind of uh, mutually agreed surveillance thing that China and the US have been doing? Has, has something changed? And if so, what is it? Because we want to know. <laughs> Don't we? Okay? We want to know if we want to know if we've pissed off the dragon and likewise yeah and likewise okay so the pentagon are well of course they're well aware of this but they're keeping it on the hush okay they're keeping it on the hush and and what they how they're acting is as if this was an aggressive maneuver by china okay how dare you come close? How dare us? We're, we're usually hovering here and then you're, you're over here. And then you come over here and get in our faces. So that's aggression. That is aggression, political and, you know, cold military aggression. Okay? So China and the USA decided to invite China to a meeting about this. They said, listen lads, let's talk. China declined the offer of a meeting. They said, hell no. Okay, because to China's mind, is it the fact that they know, they know or they think that there's nothing to discuss. It's a bit like if you, if when you were little and you did something and your parents were upset with you and you said, well, can we talk about this? And they say, no, what is there to talk about? That's how China has been with the USA. Okay. So, Janice, Janice Freya on the Today Show, she has talked about this, okay? Because as far as they're concerned, but you see, th isn't this what diplomacy is all about? At least the US went to China and said, let's talk about this, okay? As I said, something's happened something has changed because before China it seems as if China was cool before but something changed okay now added to that there has been this kind of new rhetoric put out or, or uh, somewhat enhanced or changed rhetoric about Russia and their approach to the Ukraine and basically Russia's approach to everybody okay and I'll tell you what the new rhetoric is in a second our governments want us to believe that Putin in Russia <laughs> wants to that his approach is to initially seek diplomatic solutions before he seeks military recourse now to now that sounds really strange to us in Europe right where we know Putin to be a warlord and we know Putin to be somebody who acts first and ask questions afterwards but it seems as if this new rhetoric is being put forward that we're supposed to believe that Putin is this kind of guy who is seeking diplomacy first I want to talk first let's talk it through let's meet and let's see if we can hash it out when we in Europe we know we know things to the contrary 
<laughs> right? But I feel like the West has played this game with Putin because there's this kind of mystique about him. So the information we get about him, we can only take as factual. We ain't really got nothing to check it against. We can't like fact check it. Unless of course we're over there in Russia ourselves, right? Which some of us are. But they want us to believe that Putin is this guy who respects diplomacy, which I'm sure he does, but only with certain people. Now, what they've said is, in a nutshell, they've said that he's a, he's a nutcase, he's a lunatic, he's completely mad. And he has this, this uh, country called Kaliningrad, Kaliningrad, which is slap bang in the middle of Western and Eastern and Central Europe. And this little place here has, nobody doesn't really know about it. There's no real industry there, but what it is, is this kind of military launch pad that if anything is launched from there it basically will splatter and affect everybody on this side in Western Europe and on this side in Eastern and Central Europe. It's kind of like the, the, it's got this kind of strategic position where it can just unleash if, if he wanted to if he felt led to unleash a huge weapon, nuclear weapon, it would just basically, like, you know, like dropping a paint bomb all over the place. Do you know what I mean? Whew, that was loud. So it says that this place is called Kaliningrad or it's called Kharkiv. Anyhow, they're saying that, that, that Putin has stashed a lot of nuclear weapons there, okay? Now this is alongside everything that happened last week, or a few days ago, excuse me, between China and the USA. And we also know that Putin is uh, one of Chinese uh, ally. So it's almost as if it's like Russia and China against the USA and the USA and its allies. And the USA doesn't even trust its allies, <laughs> right? So it showed these types of um, uh, nuclear weapons and they're huge so just show you and they did like this thing where they have tested these already in Ukraine now apparently when one of these are dropped from a plane family it has the effect of causing no, no, no. Uh, would you call it collateral damage? Like it wouldn't do any damage to any of the Russian warships, or uh, it can be released from far away and cause damage over here, and people here would not be affected. Okay, so because apparently there's always some kind of back. What do you call it? You know, you shoot a rifle, and there's some kind of back thing here, and then some kind of effect on the shooter well in this sense here when releasing this type of nuclear weapon uh, there is no damage to whoever has released it the aircraft and they did this demonstration of when they, they no, it wasn't even a demonstration they dropped this in the Ukraine and my god So what they're saying is that this guy called Putin, even though he's playing Mr. Nice Guy and he's open to diplomatic talks, he really is getting everything ready on this little place here called uh, Kaliningrad or whatever it's called or Ka Kharkiv or whatever it's called. Uh, he's stashing his stuff there so that if he feels sufficiently cheesed off with the USA and everybody else, including us Brits, then he will start to unleash from that piece of land which cannot be penetrated by any other place in the you know no bloody tourism there. there's no airplanes going there apart from the russian plates but it's like russian territory off mainland russia 
Hold on. It's getting long. Okay. They call it the Massive Fab 3000. And, oh yeah, and they unleashed it on a place called Kerkiv, which is actually in Ukraine. Okay? So the place is called Kaliningrad, where they keep the stash. But they unleashed it on this place called Kharkiv in the Ukraine. And this is just a picture of what it looked like, like the aerial view of when they dropped this nuclear weapon or whatever it is. Well, yeah, it's a nuclear weapon. So, so this is this is quite something. I'm going to show you. Like, uh, okay, here. This is it. See that? And see around it? That white blotch that you can see is when the thing went. And the devastation was immense. Okay, so Russia has already deployed this big weapon and they and they will do it again. Here is a picture of here is a picture of Ukrainian troops trying to not let this shit happen again. Okay? And all this stuff is on military TikTok by the way. Okay, so you can see Russian or do you can see Ukrainian troops here, I believe. Now all of this, the reason why I'm talking about all of this is because we were distracted the other day while all of this was going on. And this is, a, this is where a lot of the money is going. Your money and my money is going on this big game of of war, this big war game between all of these folks and the threat of war and so on. Meanwhile, some random kid from somewhere with no manifesto or agenda or no background, there's no background story to him apart from the fact that they said he was bullied intensely in school, just comes out of the blue, bear crawls onto a building where everybody, and I saw the video, where it's like you've got 20 people pointing at this kid and he's there crawling and then he's crawling and he's pulling his gun next to him and he's crawling he, he, he did this the, the video that I've seen is about two three minutes long I mean for crying out loud if you are security personnel or you were secret service and you saw that in the first few seconds you would go and you and your colleagues would go and and Based upon what you can see in front of you, you would stop that. But there's like 20 citizens, 20 US citizens, <laughs> my English accent came up, 20 US citizens watching this little 20 year old boy crawl around and think like he's playing bloody Minecraft up there on little, we call it the jig. And it was a low building. Family, I couldn't believe how low this building was. It looked like if you just put a ladder up against it, a small ladder, and you climb to the top of the ladder, just hoist your foot over, You'd be up there. It's a, it's a low building. It looked like a prefab. It looked like a little container house, but a small one. I couldn't believe it. The thing was like a large garden shed, but wider. And you've got 20 odd people pointing at this kid. And he's aware of them. And he's crawling. They're crawling. And they say, look, look, he's up there. They're right next to like yards away from him. But the only reason why they're not going to, you know, get in his face is because obviously he got an assault weapon up there. So what on earth happened in those few minutes? What, what was, you know, what would, what, what, what was in the earpieces of these people? 
So can we say this was staged but right now it's open as to whether it was staged by the Republicans or the Democrats because all of them jointly have arguably something to you know they're, they're all protecting what would you call it protecting US security by keeping us bloody ignorant of what actually was about to pop off in the uh, south uh, we call it the Chinese oceans with the US fighter jet because you know that would have just been the start of it and also the reason why the Chinese military jet flew in front of the US jet knowing that the US jet always does this kind of surveillance thing so what what's what was different then what you know what happened it's a bit of a weird one right anyhow this has been a bit of a mixed bag video but it's about what they were distracting us from <sighs> ashe bless i soon come back in a minute